Hey, what's up you lot? Path here, filming today on one of the hottest days in the UK that we've had in a long time. It's about 35 degrees Celsius here, and I am living for it. Today, we're talking about one of my most requested topics. We are talking about entropy. Now, entropy is a difficult idea to get your head around, so in this video, we will be focusing on one specific definition of entropy. We won't be looking at all the far-reaching implications of entropy, like the heat death of the universe or anything like that. Instead, we'll be focusing on the basics here and trying to get an intuitive sense of what entropy actually is. If you can understand that, then everything else follows quite nicely, in my opinion. Now, you might have heard entropy being described as a measure of disorder or a measure of how much disorder there is in a system. But what does this even mean? Well, we'll be delving into that description of entropy by understanding this equation here. And don't worry, as always, you only need to know high school level mathematics to get what's going on, if I've made this video correctly. So if you enjoyed the video, please do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel for more fun physics content. Let's get into it. Let's begin with a fairly abstract idea. And bear with me here, because we'll see where this is going very shortly. Let's begin by imagining that we have a box. And in this box, we have some number of particles. Let's say we've got three particles in this box. It doesn't really matter what those particles are specifically, but what actually matters is that they each carry some amount of energy. And we're going to assume here that they can only carry specific amounts of energy. We'll represent those specific amounts of energy that each particle can carry with these energy levels in this diagram. This energy level represents the smallest amount of energy that a particle is allowed to carry. This next one represents a slightly larger amount of energy that a particle is allowed to carry, and so on and so forth. Let's assume for simplicity that this lowest energy level corresponds to a particle carrying an energy E. Doesn't matter what E is, just as long as we know that it's a constant. And the next energy level, again for simplicity, corresponds to a particle carrying an energy 2E. And the next one is 3E, and 4E, and 5E, and so on. And of course, we can say that there are infinitely many energy levels that our particles can occupy. But crucially, the particles must have a minimum amount of energy they can carry, which is E, and they can only carry specific amounts of energy, so E, 2E, 3E, and so on. Now, like I said, bear with me here. The reason that we're making so many abstractions will become clear shortly. And yes, this is an abstraction. We're not saying that the particles must occupy a certain height within the box in order to have a certain amount of energy. We're not saying that particles which contain 2e worth of energy, for example, are this high off the floor of the box. That's not what we're doing here. This ladder diagram is just a way for us to represent how much energy each particle has. But now let's make a bit more progress. Let's assume that the total energy of our system, of our box, is 5e. Let's also assume that all of that energy is carried by the particles rather than like the walls of the box or something like that. What this means is that there is 5e worth of energy distributed over three particles. Let's call them particle A, particle B, and particle C. So what energy levels can these particles occupy in order for the total energy of the box to be 5e? Well, we could start by saying that particle A is in the lowest possible energy level. It has an amount of energy E. And we could also say, for example, that particle B is in the lowest possible energy level as well. This means that the remaining particle, particle C, must by necessity be in the 3E energy level. Because now the particles in the box contain 1E plus 1E plus 3E worth of energy, which is 5E in total. So this is one possible configuration that our particles could be in, in terms of how much energy each of them carries. But of course, another possible configuration is if particle B, for example, were to be in the 3E energy level, and particles A and C were to be in the lowest energy level. And another configuration still is when particle A is in the 3E level and particles B and C are in the lowest possible energy level. Again, the total energy is 5E, but we're just changing how it's distributed over the three particles in the box. And we can actually arrange these particles in a slightly different way. Say, for example, particle A is in the lowest energy level again, but this time, both particles B and C are in the second lowest energy level, 2E because now the total energy of the system is 1e plus 2e plus 2e, which is still 5e. And equally, the particles could be distributed like this or like this. And so just as a quick summary, we see that there are six different ways in which to arrange our particles so that we've got a box which contains 5e worth of energy and there are three particles within that box. These six possible ways of arranging our system are known as the six microstates of our system. And this total number of microstates that we can have for each system becomes very important when defining entropy. And I'm going to talk about one more thing before we finally start saying the magical E word. I want to let you guys know that for this video, I've done something slightly different than usual. 
I've included in the description of this video, or in like a pinned comment depending on when I remember to do this, a document with a few example questions that you can attempt after watching this video. If you don't want to hear about that, don't really care, then skip to this timestamp here. But let me quickly tell you about that document. Like I said, it contains a few questions that you can have a go at, and I've tried to make it in such a way that it gives you some useful insight into what entropy actually is. I've tried to make the questions relatively tricky, but let me know in the comments down below if they're too easy or too hard. The document also contains some basic barebone solutions right at the end, but I also want to make a video walking through each of those questions one by one. So check out the link below, like I said, it's free. I wanted to put this first one up so that I could see whether you guys liked it or not and whether you guys even were interested in something like this. But in the future, I want to start like a Patreon or something. So if any of you are interested in supporting the channel that way, then I'll make some more documents like this and chuck them on there. Not quite sure yet. I'll keep you guys updated and let me know if you're interested in something like that. Anyway, let's come back to all of these possible microstates of our system. As we saw for this particular system with total energy 5e, three particles in the box, and each of those particles can occupy an energy level of e, 2e, 3e, and so on, there are six possible different microstates the system can occupy. And this is important because the total number of microstates that a system can occupy is directly linked to its entropy. In fact, if we look at the equation that I put up on screen right at the beginning of the video, this quantity omega is actually the total number of microstates a system can occupy. And S is the entropy of the system. K subscript B is known as the Boltzmann constant. And of course, we've got the natural logarithm, ln, of omega, which is the total number of microstates a system can occupy. By the way, if you're not comfortable with logarithms, I'll leave some resources in the description below. And this is why the entropy of a system depends on how many microstates the system can occupy. Which brings us around to a rather common description of entropy. It's a measure of disorder. With this particular system, we've seen that there are six different ways to arrange it. So its entropy is equal to the Boltzmann constant multiplied by the natural logarithm of six. But if we think about another system, for example, where this time the total energy of our system is 3e, and it's got three particles, then there's only one possible microstate the system can occupy. One where all of the particles are in the lowest possible energy level, because 1e plus 1e plus 1e is equal to 3e. And there's no other possible combination here because the lowest energy level these particles can occupy is the E energy level. And if any of them are in a higher energy level, then the total energy exceeds 3E. So for this system, total energy 3E with three particles, the total number of microstates possible is one. Therefore, omega is equal to one, and its entropy is just KB multiplied by the natural log of one. Incidentally, that happens to be zero, but that's another kettle of fish entirely. The point is that the first system we looked at, which had many possible microstates that it could be arranged in, can be thought of as a disordered system. The particles can be arranged in lots of different ways. And a disordered system has a higher entropy. Whereas the second system we looked at has a much smaller number of microstates it can be arranged in. And this smaller number gives it a smaller entropy. This second system is more of an ordered system. So hopefully looking at this has given you a direct analogue of why entropy is thought of as a measure of disorder. It might be a bit of a hand wavy explanation, but again I want to just give you an intuitive sense of what entropy is trying to measure. Now there is something else I need to mention here. If we go back to the system we were looking at earlier, total energy 5e, three particles in the box, and we bring up these diagrams once again, six different possible microstates that a system can occupy, then when we calculated this system's entropy we made an implicit assumption. We assumed that the system is equally likely to be in any one of these microstates. Because when we calculated its entropy, all we said is that there are six possible microstates. We didn't say anything about it's more likely to be in this one, or it's less likely to be in this one, or anything like that. This implicit assumption isn't actually very implicit when we think about entropy from first principles, which is not what we're doing in this video. This assumption is very purposeful. The idea that this system could be in any one of these states and it's got an equal chance, equal probability of being in any one of these states. This assumption, known as the fundamental assumption of statistical thermodynamics, sometimes called the assumption of equal a priori probability, is a rather reasonable one to make for systems that are A, isolated from all other systems, and B, in thermal equilibrium. In other words, systems that all behave nicely and don't interact with anything else outside of itself. Again, tricky idea to wrap your head around, so there'll be some stuff on it in the description below. Now, it's worth noting that this definition of entropy, entropy is equal to the Boltzmann constant multiplied by the natural log of the number of microstates a system can occupy, is not the original formulation of entropy. 
the original formulation of entropy looked much more on a macroscopic scale. It looked at the system as a whole and the measurements we could make on that system. For example, the pressure of that system or the temperature or the volume of that system. In other words, the macroscopic or large scale properties of that system. But it wasn't until much later when we started looking at statistical thermodynamics and studying systems on a much smaller scale that we got this microstate dependent definition of entropy and started understanding it on a more fundamental level. And with all of that being said, I'm going to end the explanation here. If you enjoyed it, please do leave a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more fun physics content. Hit that bell button if you want to be notified when I upload and also do hit that link in the description below if you want to try out those questions that I've written for this video. There are hopefully some relatively tricky questions that you can have a go at, but if they're too easy or too difficult, let me know. As always, if I've made a mistake in this video, do tell me as well and we'll try and correct it in the comments as quickly as possible. Lastly, please do check out the two-part mini-series I made recently on one of the coolest theorems in quantum mechanics, whilst also talking about quantum operators, quantum commutators, and expectation values. I also have a second channel where I upload some original music, planning on putting out some more soon, and I have an Instagram at PathVlogs if you want to follow me on there. Thank you so much for watching as always, and I'll see you really soon.